Greetings, everybody. Today we're going to talk about an ANOVA. And some of the basics of an ANOVA. An ANOVA is going to have two variables. Our independent variable is going to be categorical, and our dependent variable will be continuous. The main question that we're trying to get an answer for is whether or not the continuous dependent variable or the quantitative variable is going to have differences in their means depending upon which group the subject or participant is in. So are there significant differences between the groups uh, and the group mean differences? If the categorical variable that we have has only two levels or two values or two groups, then we're going to use a t-test. However, with an ANOVA, we're going to do, we're able to do three or more groups. So ideally, a lot of you have probably already done a t-test and that's where we were maybe considering uh, differences between males and females or agree and disagree. So we have two groups. With an ANOVA, it's three or more groups. ANOVA is an acronym for analysis of variance. We use it with three or more groups and we're looking at the mean differences. Maybe you have a group of people and they have three groups. Some of them have no caffeine, some have a mild dose of caffeine, some have a huge jolt dose of caffeine, and then they have to go take a test or perform something. That would be where we would consider maybe an ANOVA. The treatment group is the specific group or level of independent variable that the, the participant is in. And when we talk about level, this can either be the kind or the amount. And the treatment effect is the size of the difference in the means. So how much the effect is. Here's a little example of maybe an ANOVA situation. Let's say we had 40 patients with chronic headaches and we wanted to give some of them treatment A, some of them treatment B, and some of them a placebo. And then we were to, after they did their treatment for a certain period of time or certain regiment, we would look at the number of days with headaches for a, a certain month. As you can see, each participant has recorded the number of days that they had their headaches and there's a, an average number of days, an average number of days, an average. And what we're questioning or what we're trying to answer is whether or not these differences are significantly different or if they're just due to chance. And this is why we would want to do an ANOVA. So some considerations with an ANOVA, let's think about maybe some uh, how we want to look at this graphically. We can either do some side-by-side -side box plots or maybe some histograms. We could look at density plots. We also want to consider whether the differences between the groups are significant, whether their significance depends on the, either the difference in the means or the difference in the variability or variance. So you can kind of look at either one of these. Uh, we also need to know if the sample sizes are extremely different. An ANOVA is going to give us a p-value from our F statistic, and this is what we're going to be reading ultimately to see if we find that the ANOVA is significant. We're going to have our, our F statistic, and we'll see if the p-value is below whatever we set our alpha level at. Here's just an example of a box plot of the headache example. Or again, we could do histograms or density plots. Just some examples with the headache. What does an ANOVA do? At its simplest, an ANOVA is going to test the following hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is determining or stating that the means or the difference in means, the mean differences of all of the groups are equal. Our alternative hypothesis is that not all of the means are equal. It is not that some can still be equal, but just not all of them are equal. And let me show you what I mean by this. So with an ANOVA, why are we going to use it? Well, first and foremost, we have 
at least three means that we're testing. So if we have just two, again, we're going to use our t-test. Our null hypothesis is stating that the mean of one equals the mean of two equals the mean of three, that they are all equal or not different. Our alternative could either be that one is not equal to two, or that one is not equal to three, or that two is not equal to three, or that one, two, and three are not equal. So we need to, dis de to determine which ones are not equal from each other. So we could take them just two at a time and run a bunch of t-tests, but this doesn't work as efficiently as running an ANOVA. Sometimes we do have more than just three groups. And this way it's taking all of them into consideration. Instead of using a mean difference, we can use the variance of the group means, and we can look at the grand mean over all of the groups. So the logic is very similar to the t-test. We're looking at the observed variance in the means versus what we would expect to see by chance. It's just that, again, we're going to have more than two groups. So assumptions of our ANOVA. We're going to assume that each group is approximately normal. And we're able to check on this by looking at, we can look at graphical depictions, we can use histograms, density plots, box plots. We know that we can have some non-normality, but we really do not want severe outliers. This can really skew our results. We also want to assume that our standard deviations of each group are approximately equal. So we can do, check on this through running a homogeneity test when we're running our statistics, or we can also just use the rule of thumb that the ratio of the largest to the smallest standard deviation should be less than 2 to 1. We want to keep these in mind when we're about to run our ANOVAs. The logic of the F-test is that we're comparing our observed variance in the means to what we would expect to get on the basis of chance if there were no true difference. So p there are going to be variances in when you have multiple responses or results. You're going to have variances. We're looking to see if our variances are what we would expect to see with chance or if they are beyond that. So for our F, we're looking at the variance between groups divided by the variance within groups. If the treatment is negligible or if the treatment is not effective, we're going to have a smaller F. If the treatment is a large effect, we're going to have a bigger F. So if the F statistic is hovering around 1, there's really no treatment effect. The higher the number generated from the F, the greater the likelihood that there will be a treatment effect. When we do have a significant F, so we've run, we've run our analysis, our p-value is below our alpha level, we do have a significant F, we absolutely, absolutely need to run a post hoc test. We do this because the F is going to tell us that yes, there's a difference between the three groups or the four groups or the five groups, but we don't know which ones are different. We don't necessarily know that each one is different from each one. If we have three groups, group A, group B, group C, we don't know if A is different than B or A is different than C or if B is different than C or if they are all different. We just know somewhere within those three there is a difference. So we're going to follow this up with multiple comparison tests. These are used to determine which group is different than which group, which pair or combination of pairs have significant differences between them. So it's going to offer us the details of where the differences are existing between the groups. For our post hoc comparisons, Tukey post hoc is very common. This one we want to use, it's going to test all the different pairs. It's going to test A to B, A to C, B to C. 
it's a relatively powerful test. It's a little more powerful than the Sheffy. But one of the things that we want to use this for is when our sample size between from group to group to group is similar. And yes, I see my typo, but we're just going to pretend that didn't exist. So if our sample size is similar, then we're going to want to use Tukey. If we have a really large variation in sample sizes, then we're going to switch to Sheffy. Uh, this will also detect the differences between the means um, between the different groups and identify which groups have differences. But this is what we want to use when our sample sizes are uh, very different from each other. Let's do a little refresher for t-tests. So a couple of years ago there was this phenomenon where people would stack the cups really quickly. I don't know if any of you have ever watched these videos. They're crazy awesome. But let's just say we have a group of people that were stacking cups and before they did their first time at this they got to watch a video on how to do this and get some hints and some tips and some people some members of the group watched this video many times they got to watch it over 10 times other people only got to watch it maybe two times or very few times two or three times so we then had the participants stack the cups and this was the first they were timed this was the first time in seconds and then they stacked again this was the second time and then they stacked again this was the third time and if we were interested in running a t-test to see if during time one if the amount of times the amount of time it took to stack the cups was different between the people who viewed the video several many times or the people who viewed the video few times so we were looking at this to this would this be a within or a between subjects t-test would this be an independent or a paired this would actually be an independent t-test or a between subjects t-test because we are looking to see if there is a difference between this group and this group. Now, if we wanted to look at time two, again, if we were looking at this group to this group, it would be a between subjects or an independent. Because the participant, this participant only contributes once and not twice to the condition. So again, we're still looking at t-tests here. And once again, if we were looking at the third time for the, between, this would, for the subjects to see if there was a difference in mean times for the many group or the few group, we would be looking at a between subjects design or an independent design. However, if we were looking to see if there was a difference between time one and time two, uh, and we did not we were not concerned with which group they were in we just wanted to know if once somebody had done a, a, a task are they then going to do a different time is it going to take longer or be quicker is there a difference in time from time one to time two and all of the participants are contributing to each condition this is a within subjects design or a paired samples or dependent t-test now if we added a third group who never got to see the video and we wanted to look to see if there was a difference between in time stacking between the group that had no video, the group that had very few times to watch the video, and the group that had many times to watch the video, voila, we have a Between Subjects ANOVA. And if we wanted to know if there was a difference between time one, time two, and time three, and each participant contributed to all conditions, that would be a within subjects ANOVA, uh, also known as a repeated measures ANOVA. 
And that, folks, is what I've got on ANOVA. I hope you all have a great day. Stay safe.